Hi everyone, Lucky here, and this is going to be a comprehensive guide on how to hunt, find, and down Diablo clone on the live server realms in Diablo 2 Resurrected. So, uh, spawning Diablo clone in the live realms is a lot different than spawning them in single player. In single player, all you have to do is sell one single stone of Jordan to any merchant and Diablo clone will spawn. So there was a lot of confusion around the differences between the online spawn of Diablo clone and offline. Uh, so when you're doing it online, you actually have to sell between 75 and 125 stone of Jordans to uh, the merchant. And what happens is Diablo clone spawns across every game created on the specific IP that all of those Stone of Jordans were sold on. Uh, so in order to get everyone that contributed SOJs to say a pool on the same IP, you have to keep creating games and hunt the specific IP of the game that the Stone of Jordans are being sold on. To do this, it's not intuitive and it's not built into the game. Uh, it's a very archaic system and I'm going to try to explain some tips and tricks for how best to go about uh, finding and hunting IPs for your Diablo clone hunts. I'll also be announcing an event that I'm hosting uh, that all of you will be able to join uh, where we are going to be doing a Diablo clone spawn ourselves. Everyone will contribute one SOJ and we are going to get as many people as possible on into the event. More details at the end of this video and there's gonna be a link in the description. So the first step we need to do is how do we figure out and how do we get this Diablo clone walks the earth to uh to happen in our game well we need to first be able to determine what is the ip address of the game that we are in uh so that we can tell whether or not we are actually on the ip that's hot basically what these groups will do is they will tell you okay this is going to be the hot ip and then it's your job to keep creating games until you find one on that ip there are some things that you can do to make this less painful so i'm going to show you that now when you, uh, when you first start Diablo clone hunting, you're going to want to have an, a way to determine what IP your game is on. And to do that, you're going to want to download TCP view. Uh, you can't determine your IP in the game itself, so you have to use a, another source. And what uh, I've been using is TCP view. There's instructions in the description and in my previous video of how to get that set up and installed. Uh, but basically what it looks like is this when you have it all ready. It's a list of all your connections and what IP addresses they're on. You're going to want to be looking at the remote address section. Uh, this is where you'll get the IP of the game and you're going to want to filter in the search bar on d2r.exe. So that's your Diablo 2 resurrected game. You're also going to want to sort it by create time so you can see which IP address is associated with the game that you are in currently. So I have gone through the effort of bringing in my exact view right at this moment. Um, I will show you what it looks like. I filtered out some of the unnecessary uh, material and I'm showing you right now the IP address that my game is on in the Diablo 2 resurrected server. So right now I'm on 34.152.52.99. These are the IP addresses that you have to match and you have to match them perfectly with the hot IP in order to get in a Diablo clone game. When you have TCP view up, you can actually see and confirm that the IP address that you're looking at is the game that you're in by one exiting the game. It will be read on upon exit, just like that. And then also when you join a game, it will briefly show green. So that's my new IP that I'm on 35.203.101.188. Uh, that's the new IP of the game I just joined. It will flash green for a moment when you're in, and then you can always just confirm by, once again, leaving the game, and it will flash red, and saying you've just left that IP. So that is how you determine what IP the game you're in is. And if you want to keep getting more IPs, you have to keep creating new games. You can do that about every 30 seconds the game lets you do it currently. Uh, so what I recommend is go kill Pendle, uh, maybe farm Eldritch if you can. Uh, that'll give you a good 30 seconds and then you'll be able to start a new game. So you get some magic find out of the way as well. 
So there are ways that you can actually, instead of just randomly joining games, you can actually target specifically uh, IP addresses that are closer to the game that you are trying to target on. So say we're doing an event and I have an IP address that I was given. Uh, we'll say for the purpose of this example, the target IP is gonna be this one right here, 158.115.221.69. So there are ways that we can go about having a much greater chance of hitting this IP. You saw the first two games, we didn't even get the first two numbers right. These are called octets. Uh, we wanna, we want to increase our chances of getting at least the first two octets so that we can match the last two numbers and have a perfect match for our IP. And the way to do this is through the Windows Defender firewall settings. Uh, and it's it sounds complicated, but it's really not all that complicated to set up. And I'm going to show you that now. And I'll show you what we do, and then maybe we'll we'll get closer <laughs> with our with our matches. So. You open up your Windows Defender and uh, your Windows Defender firewall. You go to outbound rules and create a new rule. And then you're going to want to go to a custom rule and then choose program path. You're going to want to choose your uh, d2r.exe and so this is going to be limiting the IPs that this game can connect to so then we have our protocol and ports you just hit next here which remote IP addresses does this rule apply to this is where you're going to want to add the ranges so we got a lot of 34s and 35s as our first octets we want to block all of them so in order to do that we just enter the rules right here. And what this is going to do is actually it's going to block any IP addresses that start with 34 and 35. So this is blocking the first half of 34. And I'm going to post these exact ranges so that you can do this yourself in the description. This is blocking the second half of 34. What we did here was we left one blank and we actually uh, whitelisted the 117 port because that's used for other things in D2R and we won't be able to connect to games if that's also blocked. And the last one we're going to do is just block all of the 35s because we do not need those. Okay, so those are all set. Now I will not join any games that are 34 and 35. Block the connection, sit next here, and then name it something that you'll remember, uh, IP hunting declone. An important thing to note is that when you are done, uh, you will want to make sure to disable this rule. Otherwise you're gonna have many issues trying to connect to public games or trade games. Uh, only have this uh, operating and enabled when you are trying to hunt for declone because you will have issues. So just want to make sure that you're all aware of that. Make sure you turn it off. Okay. So now I have those blockers on my firewall and now I want to try again and try to get closer to this 158.115.221.69. All right. So what I'm going to do is I am going to make sure my IP hunter is enabled and you're going to want to close down your game and reopen it. So now your firewall setting should have taken effect. You'll want to test them out by joining a game. So there you see that 34.117, I needed that to get on. <laughs> so you don't want to block the 34.117 IP. 
You're seeing it show up right now. All right, I am going to attempt to enter a game. I got into a game and my first hit was, well, now that's a lot closer, huh? We got 158, 115, 222, 109. So we already matched the first two. And the benefit of now going forward is we are pretty much going to be always on a 158 or we should the majority of the time. We've just reduced significantly the potential amount of IPs that we can join. So we'll go, we'll farm something real quick. Remember, we're looking for to match the entire string. So 158, 115, 221, 69. You can already see the effect that the firewall had compared to the IPs that we were getting previously. All right, let's do a little quick farming and confirm that that was the IP. Then we'll try to join again. Remember, you can only make a game once every 30 seconds. So try to find a farming route that will allow you to spend around 30 seconds. All right, we just joined again and we got 158, 115 again, uh, 222, 197. So we haven't gotten it yet, but this is why a lot of walks allow for a lot of time to find games. And the way to hunt the IP is literally just what I'm doing right now. And it's, you just create, leave games. I like to do a little bit of magic finding in the game uh, because otherwise you'll just be sitting in the loading screen waiting for your uh, 30 seconds to be up. And I've actually found some nice items just in Diablo clone hunts uh, off like Pindle and Eldritch. So you want to make sure you wait your 30 seconds and try again. Okay. And this is going to be the last attempt I do just to show you an example. If, um, if you're trying to create the games too soon, you'll get that error message, but let's see. All right, so we got 158, 155, 222, 208. So we, we didn't get a match yet, but this was just a very short period of time. You only need to match once in the span of some of these hunts last even five hours. Um, the one that we are gonna run, and I'm gonna go over a little bit of the details soon, uh, is only gonna be two hours, but still plenty of time to potentially get a match. Um, once you get a match, you just wait in your game. And then there are some ways that you uh, want to probably know how to spawn and then down Diablo clone. So once you're in a game, that's a match. Uh, Diablo clone spawns on the first super unique monster that you encounter that has not already been spawned and encountered in the game. So we'll go back to the original video that I was showing and it was from our previous run where I go into the game here, I go to the waypoint and I go right to Eldritch. Eldritch is a, a super unique monster. He's super close to the waypoint. So I love to spawn my D clones here. So we go in the portal. Sure enough, we hadn't seen Eldritch yet in this game. We go up to him and D clones there. Uh, some of the other popular super unique monsters that you know of are like Rekinishu, Corpse Fire, um, in Act 2, you could spawn them at Fire Eye, where um, you go into the Arcane Sanctuary. Uh, other popular areas are like uh, any of the seal bosses in the Chaos Sanctuary. You cannot use the Chaos Sanctuary glitch to kill D-Clone. You cannot do that anymore. It does not work. It was taken out of Diablo 2 Resurrected, so do not attempt it. Uh, you will need to actually find a way to defeat Diablo Clone for real. <laughs> and. Uh, and I will go over some of the ways to do that right now. So you, if you have any sort of um, character that can kill Uber Tristram or the mini Ubers, you will probably be able to defeat Diablo Clone. The important things to remember are um, any sort of constant damage over time to prevent him from regenerating or prevent monster heal, which works on Diablo Clone or some sort of open wound source. Um, your mercenary cannot prevent, cannot apply the prevent monster here so you will have to be able to apply it on whatever character you decide but once you have the ability to prevent diablo clone from regenerating health it's really a relatively easy fight for almost any character uh, to do but if you are concerned that you won't be able to before a walk before you join a group then you will want to make sure that you line up a 
someone to come in and down Diablo Clone for you. So this is a uh, video of my smiter. I have a smiter video going over all of his gear, a very budget build uh, that's able to take down Diablo Clone in, in seconds. I mean, this is really not the the, the epitome of, of enemies in the game or not very difficult at all. Uh, you see here a quite budget build is able to, to down him fairly easily. So it doesn't take all that much to, to take him down. You just want to remember those important things. Open wounds, prevent monster heal, or uh, damage over time to prevent him from regenerating any health. And then like melee builds, crushing blow is huge. So uh, this is how you hunt IPs, find Diablo clone, and down Diablo clone. Uh, so a little bit of information on the event that's coming up, and uh, I want to actually hold many of these. And we're going to start with a buy-in of one SOJ. So it will only cost one SOJ to get involved. Um, all the information is going to be in this video. What your one SOJ will get you is the hot IP that we will be searching on. It will only go to the people that have paid an SOJ. I will be collecting them and you will see me on stream sell all up to 125 SOJs to spawn the Diablo clone event. You will have two hours to get into an IP um, and then I will start selling and we'll give about an additional half an hour of selling uh, to for a last minute chance of getting into a game and, and then obviously I will be streaming it and people on stream will, will see and um, they'll be able to tell and make sure that they are in the right game and the right IP. If you're having trouble killing it, I'm sure someone can help. Um, if you do not manage to get into a game, unfortunately, we will not be able to refund the SOJ because we have no way of proving whether or not you were actually able to get into a game or not. So um, it's really important if you have these instructions and you've set up everything like I've shown in this video, especially with the firewall settings, your likelihood of getting it into a game increases significantly. Um, we expect at least 90% of participants to be able to get into a game and get a Diablo clone. Understand that not everyone will and there will be some people that did not make it this time, but going forward any stone of jordans that are left over so it, it's between 75 and 125 i'm going to collect 125 before we do the event anything left over will go into the next event so i am from my personal supply i'm going to be contributing 10 sojs of my own to start the pool for this upcoming event so in order to get to 125 um, i am starting it with 10 of my own uh, so that we can reduce the number of participants that we need to increase everyone's chances. And then going forward, any leftover SOJs will also be put into the pot just like this. We'll add another 10 uh, to increase the chances of everyone getting Stone of Jordan. So if you're interested in joining, um, information below, join the Discord, follow me on uh, Twitch, and we will collect your SOJs and get all the information you need. Uh, and we, it would be cool to be able to do one of these like every week. Um, and it would be a lot of fun. So I hope that if this interests you, you will join us and give it out, give it a try. It's, it's worth trying at least once. It's not the best mechanic. And I do, uh, really hope that it gets changed, but, uh, this is what we are dealing with at the moment. And this is how, uh, the best way that we have found to go about hunting Diablo Club. I hope you enjoyed this video and all the tips and tricks. Uh, I hope to see you in the streams. And if you have any questions, feel free to um, put them in the comments. I try to address as many questions as possible or uh, hop in the stream and you can ask me there. All right, guys, I will see you all in the next video. Uh, have a good one.